Hi, and welcome back to Hill and Plotten's VA Disability Blog. I'm Natalia Joffrey, the company COO. And I'm attorney Rachel Cheek. So Rachel, today we have a spicy topic, mm -hmm. which is reductions. And the $100 million question clients ask us, why is the VA reducing my benefits? Great so question. I'm assuming there's a multitude of answers, but generally speaking, why would the VA reduce someone's benefits? Well, generally the VA's reasoning, you know, if that's the actual reason or not, and, right. you know, up to you to decide. The VA's reasoning when they will send a, um, a reduction proposal is that um, whatever condition that they're proposing to reduce has gotten better. And so they're saying, okay, well, you know, while you may have this condition was, you know, say 50% disabling in the past, um, we believe that it's improved. So now we're proposing to reduce it to 20%, 10%. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not necessarily always that they're going to take it all away, but mm -hmm. they just may feel that there's aspects of your claim or of your condition that have gotten better. And so they're going to reduce the service connected percentage. Right. Mm -hmm. So can you ever think of a case where the reduction in the rating has actually been accurate or proper? Because I know that with most conditions, like a BA back condition, um, this is not highly unlikely it's ever going to get better. Right. You know, um, PTSD, mm -hmm. that's never really going to get better. I mean, it may get to the point to where you can live with the pain mm -hmm. or you can live with the condition or you treat it to where you can function, but to the point to where it improves to have a reduced rating, mm -hmm. that seems highly unlikely for a lot of, or most conditions that I can think of mm -hmm. that we help veterans with. Um, but do you have any examples where you can think of that it's been accurate? Sure. So you actually raised some great points that we're going to get into later as okay. far as um, whether conditions improve, how do we show that they've improved. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I can think, the type of condition where reductions will be taken and generally um, it is the right decision is um, cancers. Cancers will be rated at 100% while they're active, while you're in active treatment. Okay. But if you later go and if you say have prostate cancer, you're rated at that, maybe rated at 100%. While you're getting treatment, say you have surgery or the um, whatever treatment you're getting works, it goes into remission, you will be then reduced to whatever the residuals of that cancer causes. That's a great example because mm -hmm. I know we've seen that. I've seen that a lot in like breast cancer cases. Mm -hmm. So during the time, right, and then mm -hmm. once it's in remission, because we do, we hear all the time, mm -hmm. I've been in remission for 10 years or 20 years or whatever mm -hmm. the situation may be. Okay. I'll say this. Sometimes they will just automatically reduce the rating, and mm -hmm. they, they sh it shouldn't be go down necessarily to zero. So I'll ah, use this as an example. Okay. Um, so the prostate cancer, for example, you're rated at 100 percent. It goes into you know remission, um, or you had surgery. Um, they might have this happen with one client. You know they dropped his rating down to zero. Mm -hmm. Well, he still had residuals from this cancer, and he had you know um, urination problems. There were there were certain issues that still come up after you have surgery. They can be complicated. Right. Um, however, the VA, rather than looking at these other residual conditions that he had due to the cancer, they just dropped his rating down to zero, saying that he didn't have any issues. Ah. So that was an issue where the reduction from 100% was proper, but all the way down to zero was not. Was not. Mm -hmm. Okay. You talked about wanting to get a little bit more into like PTSD and back conditions. Mm -hmm. So what do you see in those types of conditions? So, well, it's not the specific conditions per se, but it is um, as far as when the VA decides to reduce. Uh -huh. So we'll use that for an example. So we'll use um, PTSD as an example. Mm -hmm. um, say you have, um, you're rated at 50% for PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, you routinely will have um, be scheduled for CMP exams periodically every few years or so for most conditions. Um, you'll be rescheduled for another exam every now and again, just to see how you're doing. Some conditions, again, do get better. Right. Great majority don't. Right. Um, so say you have a 50% rating for PTSD. Um, you've, you've been having the 50% symptoms from the time you've been rated. Um, it comes around time for your next CMP exam. You go, um, the examiner finds that um, your condition's improved. Whether or not that's true, right. you know, it, it, that's, that's what we're going to get into. Mm -hmm. But the examiner says your condition's improved. Um, consequently, the VA proposes to um, 
reduce your rating uh -huh. based upon this one exam. Right. That's not what they're supposed to do. Okay. VA is not supposed to take a look at one exam and say, okay, well, we're going to take this over all the evidence that's already in the record. I was going to say, because normally when you're trying to prove a claim, I mean, you submit tons of records mm -hmm. and different statements and different CMP exams. I mean, like all of this evidence. Mm -hmm. And then based on one exam or one evaluation mm -hmm. for them to take it all away or reduce it. Seems not proper. Pretty and fair. Okay, mm -hmm. so not proper is <laughs> accurate. Okay, so if that happens, then what's your recourse? So when the VA proposes to reduce your rating, mm -hmm. um, they can't just do it out of nowhere. Okay. So only uh, unless they reduce your rating, but your combined rating doesn't go down. Mm -hmm. So say you have a a seventy percent combined rating, they reduce. Um, a, a very small rating for, you know, your, your left pinky. Uh -huh. um, it doesn't affect your overall 70% rating. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have to give you notice of that because okay. it doesn't actually affect your amount of monthly benefits. Uh, okay, okay. But for the mass, vast majority of um, reduction cases, the VA that is going to reduce your overall benefits, your overall monthly benefits, so the VA has to give you notice. Mm -hmm. So um, when the VA decides they want to take a proposal, um, of reduction, they have to send you a notice mm -hmm. and it'll let you know, hey, this is our proposed um, action. We would like to reduce this rating from 50% to 30%. Uh, you have 60 days to submit evidence, argument, tell us why this shouldn't be taken. Okay. So those 60 days are key. So as soon as you get that notice, you are on, on notice to start preparing if you think that this reduction is improper. And right. A lot of the times they are. So it's almost like start the clock. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's the what the clock that's what, is a ticking. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. When we get one of these, that's immediately what we do. We put it in the calendar and, and we note our deadlines. So important, the first 30 days after you get that proposal are really important because during those first 30 days, you can ask for a hearing mm. for a predetermination hearing. Okay. What that effectively does is that kind of gives you some extra time mm -hmm. because when you request a hearing with the VA, they then can't make a decision without conducting that hearing. You have a right to that. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Now, if you don't request a hearing, the 60 days keeps ticking, but you're not really getting yourself any extra time or you're not really giving yourself a chance to maybe be able to speak with someone at the VA, a representative, and explain you know, why exactly your condition has or hasn't gotten better. Right, 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 right. So... That's definitely something I'd recommend. If you ever get a proposal for reduction within that first 30 days, ask for a personal hearing. It's your right. Right. Uh, additionally, within the, those 30 days or the next 30 days, those 60 days after your notice, you can be submitting new evidence in the meantime. Okay. So you can show, you know, that can be a statement. Uh -huh. Hey, my condition hasn't improved. Here are all the symptoms that I still live with. Right. Medical records from your doctors. No, Mr. You know, Smith's condition hasn't improved. Here's what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, you may even, if the reason the VA is taking this reduction is based off of a CMP exam, mm -hmm. like, like we talked about earlier, that might be, you might have enough time within those 60 days. You might want to get an additional independent examination to mm -hmm. show, look, I reviewed these same records and the condition is not at all improving. Right. Um, this examiner's findings were incorrect. Okay. So what can I do, a veteran, uh, to stop a VA reduction? Sure. So, um, again, they, the VA has to send you a proposal, um, that proposal letter that starts at 60-day clock. Mm -hmm. Within that time frame, I mean, and if your condition hasn't improved, it's even possibly getting worse, you need to do, um, you do, should request a hearing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to request a hearing, but it's just a better idea. It buys you time. It, buys you it time. gives you yeah. a chance to really make your case. Mm -hmm. um, again, VA can't make a decision without holding that hearing. Mm -hmm. So again, request a hearing. Um, you also need to gather evidence. You mm -hmm. need to figure out um, why maybe the VA is making this decision uh, or making this proposal, how, what can you do to show that your condition hasn't improved? Again, evidence, statements. Basically counter that, right? Exactly. Like exactly. if they're saying this has gotten better, you need to submit evidence that mm -hmm. shows them it how and why it hasn't. Exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Um, are there any health conditions that are more prone to being reduced than others? So we mentioned earlier cancers, um, mm -hmm. when they're not active, um, mm -hmm. those often are, are reduced down to whatever the residuals of the mm -hmm. cancer are. 
Um, so there are certain conditions that are kind of episodic. So like manic depression, um, mm -hmm. ulcers are another one. Some people can have, you can have an ulcer condition and they, they kind of come and go. Mm -hmm. um, so with conditions like that, the VA has to show that there's been sustained improvement, that it's not just, okay, well, yeah, that you're having a good month this month. Right. Who's to say you're not going to have a bad month next month? They have to review your entire medical record. I used to see that a lot with MS too and multiple mm -hmm. sclerosis where the person when they were having a bad episode, which a bad episode could last months, years, mm -hmm. um, but they would become completely wheelchair bound or needed to use a walker. Um, could barely care for themselves, feed themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really bad. And then suddenly they would be able to function almost normally. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't mean that the MS was cured because right. that doesn't exist, but they wouldn't be in, in an active flare up, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it would get better for a short period of time, which prompts me to a question. So let's say you do get better, better for a little bit, but then it, your condition worsens again. So let's go back to the cancer example. Mm -hmm. So let's say the prostate cancer comes back. Mm -hmm. What do you do then? So at that point, you would want to file for increased rating. Mm -hmm. So you would just do as you do with any other um, VA claim. You'd go ahead, in this case, it'd be a condition that you're already connected for. So you would want to do a supplemental claim. Mm -hmm. With a supplemental claim, you need to submit evidence. So in this case, that would be as simple as um, a medical record from your doctor showing that, you know, the cancer's returned or whatever your lab results may be. File that. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are stabilized ratings? So stabilized ratings are ratings that have been in effect for five years or more at the same rate. So when a rating's been stabilized, um, the VA then they again they can't make their determination mm -hmm. uh, propose uh, they can't make a proposal to reduce just based upon you know one piece of evidence in the file. They have to take into account all of the evidence in the record. They have to take into account um, the the condition that you were in at the time that you got rated. Mm -hmm. They have to compare whatever examination, whatever evidence was in the record at that time. Um, with whatever evidence is in the record at the time now that they're proposing to reduce. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of times that this will be based on just one CMP exam. Mm -hmm. I had a case, uh, I, had, I went all the way up to the board for um, where the veteran had PTSD, the, the VA proposed to reduce it, they actually did reduce it mm -hmm. based on one CMP exam. However, mm -hmm. Um, you know, this man's records throughout the entire time, from the time he got rated to the time they proposed to reduce, showed very severe symptoms of PTSD that were not improving. Right. And so that's not right for the VA to just base that off of one piece of evidence and not the entire medical history. Okay. And so once again, same recourse. Mm -hmm. So just because they're not supposed to do it doesn't mean that they don't. Correct. Is that accurate? Okay. That's right. Um, and so what would you say, what are continuous ratings? Continuous ratings. Okay. So when you've had a rating in effect, for 20 years or more at mm -hmm. the, um, at either the, this, you've had been rated at the, you've been rated for the same condition for 20 years or more. Um, this rating may have gone up during that time, you know, may have gone down, but you've been rated at that condition. Mm -hmm. Once you've had a, a rating in effect for at least 20 years, the VA can't take that away, even if you've gotten better. Okay. Unless they show that the initial grant of service connection or rating was based on fraud uh, or clear and unmistakable error. There was a mistake made in the original determination. Okay. Um, I know that a lot of veterans worry about that. So here's mm -hmm. my question. Is that commonplace? Does that happen frequently? So if you've already been on benefits 20, 20 years mm -hmm. uh, for this a particular condition and like perfect example, PTSD, 10%. Mm -hmm. I meet veterans all the time, Vietnam veterans, and they've been getting 10% for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And they have, you know, all of these problems. And now we're going to go for an increased rating, but they're afraid that they're going to lose that 10%. Mm -hmm. Is that something that they should be fearful about? Because what they'll say to me is that they're afraid of a reduction mm -hmm. or having their benefits taken away. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, I can understand that fear. You know, mm -hmm. you think, okay, I've got what I've got. I, I don't know that I want to push any farther. I hear that a lot from, yep. from potential clients. Um, but the thing is, if, if you've been receiving this rating for 20 years and you have had that diagnosis, you've had, you know, obviously this evidence is throughout your record, you know, you've been getting treatment or you can even just, you have people 
who know you who can yeah. you know submit evidence saying no this has been going on for this long right um it, it's it's unlikely that if, when you have a rating that long the va is suddenly going to find a way to reduce it if the va wants to reduce your rating they're not going to wait for you to put a claim in right uh -huh. <laughs> yeah because that's that's the notion though mm -hmm. people think it's going to bring attention to my claim mm -hmm. you know so um they the truth is they can review it whenever they want mm -hmm. to whether you file a claim or, or file for an increased rating or not. Right. And again, as far as once a rating has been in place for 20 years, unless the VA finds that, you know, you were lying in the first place, which mm -hmm. how often does that happen? It's so hard for people to tell the truth and get their claims approved. Um, right. The, I, the amount of nonsense I see from the VA stating that these, you know, this clear medical evidence, you know, doesn't surprise right. to the level. I would honestly be impressed if somebody could lie and get service right. connection. <laughs> um, yeah. In, in any case, uh, it, it's it's very unlikely that the VA is going to say, "Oh, well, we made a mistake 20 years ago. Let's take this away because you're you're asking for for what you should be having now." Right. Unless they have hard evidence that mm -hmm. it was fraudulent. Mm -hmm. Okay. How difficult is it to stop a proposed rating reduction? So it's. It's less difficult and more of a pain. I mean, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just as, as we were saying, it, I mean, it's about, it, it's like proving any claim. So uh -huh. in this case, even though you don't file a claim, you're still trying to prove something. You're uh -huh. trying to prove that your condition hasn't gotten better. Uh -huh. So it's, it's just the same burden as pretty much any other process with the VA. Um, again, you, it, it comes down to the evidence and it comes down to the procedure. Okay. And what applies if they reduce you unlawfully? Like we mm -hmm. hear about severance. What mm -hmm. can you tell us about that? Okay. So is there, so severance is not only are they reducing your rating, uh -huh. but they're discontinuing the service connection altogether. Altogether. They're saying, look, um, we service connected you for, you know, a back condition. Turns out we shouldn't have done that at all. So we're not just taking your rating away. We're, we're decreasing your rating. We're taking that entire service connection away. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's kind of the same principle for for reductions as well. They have to give you notice. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the the sixty days, et cetera. Now, once the VA say they went ahead and proposed reduction or they proposed severance, either you know you didn't realize to submit evidence or the VA just didn't accept what you submitted. In any case, the pr proposed reduction or severance takes place. Uh -huh. So when the VA does that, they have to issue a rating decision mm -hmm. in which you can appeal. Mm -hmm. And then it just enters back into the appeals process. Like anything else, you know, got a decision, you're not happy with it. Um, you, you go ahead and appeal that to the VA. It's easier, I would say, to stop it from happening than, right. ha than getting it reversed. Mm -hmm. Easier than it takes shorter time. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, get this proposed reduction, you've got 60 days to kind of take care of it. By the end of the 60 days, the VA might say, okay, yeah, sorry, we, yeah. we don't want to take this. Thanks for the evidence. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> whereas if they've already taken it, mm -hmm. um, it's not saying that it won't be reversed ever, but you have to go back through the appeal system. So you've got to file your, your notice of disagreement, your appeal. You've got to submit the evidence required. It just takes more time. Yeah. Um, however, in the event that the VA, you know, does recognize, okay, look, we made a mistake. We shouldn't have reduced this. The correct um, remedy for a uh, unlawful reduction or severance is to restore your rating or your service connection back to the date where they reduced it from. Okay. So you can get that rating back if they took it um, on improperly. Okay. Really quickly, does it take as long to appeal a reduction um, as it does to file a claim, an initial claim and like the entire, because I know normally a regular claim two, three years before mm -hmm. it's all said and done mm -hmm. um, on average. So does this take just as long? I had a, I had a conference with a VA representative today. This is 2020. Um, for a reduction proposal from 2018. So wow, it is taking it can take that long, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Rachel. This was super helpful. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions or um, concerns, please feel free to visit our website or call our office.